Well, good day. Glav here. Welcome back and thanks for checking back in. The purpose of this video today is that I've had some of my mates in Thailand ask the question, where are the photos of the new bike? And I've been ginning around with weeks. I did take some photos, but they're ratchet as usual, so I thought, you know what? I'll just do a quick video with this. So, having said that, let's get on with it. This is Indian's ride command system. I've got to tell you, it's pretty intuitive. Um, this is the vehicle system and it tells you how many kilometres you've got to empty, what your battery's running at, how many kilometres to the next service. It has a fuel gauge uh, around here. Um, has tachometer, speed, engine temperature, and when the bike's running it has PSI. But you can flick through a myriad of screens here like this is a, a trip meter and it tells you know what ride, uh, how far you've been and all those sort of stats, um, etc, etc. Um, then you flick across, this bike has full navigation, um, you don't have to pay for it, it comes standard with it. Um, it's a lot better than the Harley navigation that's for sure but um, then again I don't reckon anything's as good as Google Maps. Um, so. You've got your music, obviously. You've got your Wi-Fi connection and phone, uh, etc., and hooking up your your um, helmet, um, and you've got all your other settings. Very, very intuitive. Don't need to need to read the manual. It's just obviously to work the way through. The only comment I made: you see, traction control was on there. Um, a couple of times I've lit the back tyre up on this bike. I'm not sure when the traction control is supposed to cut in, but hey, who cares? This is another standard feature that I just absolutely love is the uh, windscreen. So you can either just move it up slightly or double click and it'll bring the screen right up. Um, absolutely love it. I had a Chieftain that I used it on as well. It's great. If it's, if it's not raining it stays down. If it's raining I bring the thing up or if it's really windy I bring the thing up. Absolutely fantastic. Um, love this option on the bike. and It's not an option, it comes, comes standard. The bike comes standard with uh, Brembo twin disc front end and Brembo brake on the back. Braking capacity is uh, just fantastic on this bike and that's standard. What you're looking at here is also standard, is an inverted uh, front end, handles fantastically. On the rear it has a fully adjustable, hydraulically adjustable Fox shock. The combination of the front end and the Fox shock is just fantastic, just glides across the top of rough road. I really like the ride on this bike. Another standard feature which I love on this bike is it's got a fully adjustable uh, front brake which I think is a uh, great idea. My mate had to uh, get a set of adjustable levers for his Harley and it cost him between three and four hundred dollars. The crash bars on this bike come as on the limited comes as standard however the highway pegs do not I do such big miles, I always have highway pegs on my bike because it allows you to stretch your legs and adjust your back. Um, from memory, the pegs, the end of their genuine Indian highway pegs, they suit the bike, 390 Aussie dollars for those. Um, these are not the standard handlebars, these are KST 8 hangers. Um, I got them from J&P in the US. Cost me about 450 Aussie dollars to have them landed here. Um, uh, me and a mate fitted them. I've got to say though, in terms of actual man hours, there's probably 12 or 14 man hours involved in fitting these bars. Having said that, 14 inches high, absolutely love them. They are so comfortable to ride with. This is not the standard air cleaner. This is an Indian Stage 1 air cleaner. It's cost about 587 Aussie. Um, Indian themselves fitted it. When they put this on, Indian actually throw a new map through the ECU to cater for the extra air that the bike will be sucking. The rider's back, dress, back rest is not standard, um, but given the amount of touring kilometres I do, I always get one. 
Um, this was not cheap. This is a genuine Indian one. You can't actually get another brand. Um, like a Harley, you can get various aftermarket brands. Genuine Indian, 752 Aussie bucks. These uh, grips are Indian heated grips. You've probably asked why do you want heated grips in Australia, and that is we ride all year round, even when it's freezing cold. Have already used them on that wet ride we went on. It was only 18 degrees, but we were soaking wet, so it was bloody cold, so I've already used them on there. Um, I would don't like having a bike these days without them, to be frank. They're not cheap. Uh, once again, they're about 300 bucks. The Indian comes with three separate bits of exhaust. You've got the slip-on on the end, and then you look down there underneath, you can just see a part of the crossover pipe, which normally has the catalytic converter in it. And then, of course, you've got the header. So in summary, headers, catalytic converter, and the slip-ons. What you're looking at here is the standard Indian catalytic converter which is no longer in the bike. It's huge in size and huge in weight and now it's just got a straight crossover pipe from TAB. Also I do have TAB uh, slip-ons on this bike as well. They make the bike sound and go a whole lot better in combination with the catalytic converter being deleted. Not cheap however just the catalytic converter deduction and the tab slip-ons were about $1,700. So pretty expensive. But between the exhaust and the air cleaner, this bike absolutely rockets. Obviously I haven't had it on a dyno and can't be bothered, but I reckon if I lined it up against my 2018 117 CVO Harley, which had a cam, tuner, you name it, it had it. I reckon this thing would blow it into the weeds. The only thing I don't like on this bike is it's got a speed limiter fitted as standard from Indian, 110 miles an hour, or as I found out, about 178 kilometers an hour. Not happy jam. This is the Indian Sissy Bar. Once again, you can't get an aftermarket brand yet for this bike. Uh, it's a pretty heavy unit pretty comfortable for the uh, passenger and the rack on the back. The only time I will ever use it is when I've got a passenger on the back or when I've got luggage to go on the rack on a big ride. I've got to tell you this thing is friggin expensive. $1442 for that bloody thing there. I actually hate the look of this sissy bar on the, rock, on the bike but hey there's no choice when you've got to go touring. So the bike's done about 8,000 kilometres uh, in the two months that I've had it. Uh, another big ride coming up next weekend down into New South Wales. So far, I've got to tell you, I absolutely love this bike. Um, it's going very, very well. There's a little squeak in it that I need them to get rid of that's uh, annoying me, but hey, uh, hopefully they'll get on top of that this week. It goes like the clappers, it rides beautifully, it handles beautifully. Um, so, so far, very, very happy with this bike. Remembering that I've had half a dozen Harleys and still got a Harley, so I'm a Harley guy, but, and I've had a Chieftain some years ago before this one. So, but this is an Indian. I love this bit of kit. It goes really well. But only time will tell. Time will tell how good this bike is. We'll loop back on this when I've done 80 or 100,000 Ks and see how the bike's going then. As I say, always people, remember life can be ever so short, therefore live life today.